I've spent the past seven years traveling the world perfecting my craft. You see, I'm something of a magician. Inventor, inventor and cocktail maker. So quiet up and listen down. No, scratch that. Let's make a cow liquor today in honor of Willy Wonka. It's cocktail time. With the release of the new Willy Wonka movie, I thought you might like to enjoy something chocolatey yourself. So today, we're making homemade cacao liqueur, more specifically in style of white creme de cacao. Then, I'll make two delicious cocktails with it. One creme de cacao classic and a Negroni for people who aren't a fan of Negronis. You'll only need five simple ingredients to make this cacao liqueur. And I'll show you two different techniques. One with a blender, one with a sous vide. And we'll test if there's a difference. To have a benchmark, I'll compare the result with this. Dutch cacao. The Kuiper's creme de cacao, made with Criollo cacao nibs, sell in cinnamon, vanilla, and spiced with arak from Indonesia. It has 24% ABV. It was made in partnership with Jörg Meyer, owner of the Lyon Bar de Paris in Hamburg and the creator of the famous Jim Basil smash. He actually gave me this exact bottle at the BCB in Berlin. Thank you, Jörg. Let's see what we're up against, shall we? It has a clear, very pale, straw golden color and there's plenty of cocoa and chocolate notes on the aroma. It's full-bodied with a strong chocolate truffle and cacao butter taste. Vanilla, cinnamon and arak also add a nice richness, with everything being well balanced. Being creme de cacao is still on the sweeter side, but nowhere near the cheap stuff available in the stores where I live. All in all, great job, Jörg. Hopefully, we can get close to this with our homemade versions. I'll first show you the instant version using a blender. You can see a similar recipe used by Derek over on the Make and Drink channel. I'll post the link in the description. I'll follow that with a cocktail time staple, a sous vide version. Here's what you'll need to make both versions, white creme de cacao. For flavor, we need cocoa butter, rum and vanilla. Today I'm using Botran Reserva Blanca, an aged and filtered rum from Guatemala. Vanilla will accentuate the chocolate notes and will not be as prominent as you'd think. We'll of course also need sugar and water. That's it. For the instant version, I'm just adding everything into the blender, starting with 350 ml of rum, or exactly half of a bottle. To that, add 140 grams of cocoa butter. If you're worried about your blender not being strong enough, you can cut the butter into smaller chunks. Then add 110 grams of sugar to turn this into a liqueur, and 140 grams of water to bring down the ABV level. Lastly, I'm adding 0.7 gram of a vanilla bean, split lengthwise and with the seeds scraped out. If you're using vanilla extract, essence or paste, make sure you're not overpowering other flavors. Start with less and make notes for the next batch. Blend on high speed for at least 30 seconds or until you see everything is blended into a homogeneous mixture. Then filter out the solids using a rinsed coffee filter to get our instant white creme de cacao. Don't expect this to be perfectly clear, due to the cocoa fat that still comes through the filter. You could place the strained liqueur into the freezer for the fat to freeze, which you could then strain again, but that's no longer an instant version. So here we are, bottle, label, and let's move on to the sous vide version, before we try them both. Here you will first turn on the sous vide, to get the water up to the right temperature, 55 degrees Celsius or 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Then let's get the ingredients ready, this time in a sous vide bag, same amounts as before, starting with 350 ml of rum. I guess they added an extra ounce when bottling, probably for a snackery. Follow that with 140 grams of cocoa butter and 0.7 gram of vanilla. Cut and seeds scraped out for maximum flavor. We'll add water and sugar later, so vacuum seal the bag, using a double seal as always. Then add the bag into the sous vide bath. This will cook for four hours, but I'll take out the bag at least once per hour to give it a shake and make sure everything is cooking evenly. Once the butter melts, the fat will want to float on the top. Try to place something over the bag to make sure it's fully submerged underwater. After 4 hours, place the bag into an ice bath or even a freezer for the cocoa butter to solidify. Cut open the bag and same as before, filter through a rinse coffee filter. Give it time before we move on to the next step. You can use the leftover cocoa butter for something like cocoa brownies, homemade hot chocolate or even an amazing hot butter crumb. Might even make that in a future episode. Now I'll measure how much infused rum I ended up with, because I'll be adding water and sugar based on this. For every 100 ml of our cocoa rum, we'll add 40 grams of water and 32 grams of sugar. You can add your yield into the liqueur calculator on kevincoast.com to get the right amounts. I ended up with 280 grams, so I'm adding 112 grams of water and 90 grams of sugar. You could turn those amounts into a syrup and mix it with the rum, but I love seeing my magnetic stirrer at work. So I'm using that, link in the description, if you want to get yourself an early Christmas gift. Oh, 
once all the sugar has dissolved. It's time to bottle, label and finally try both of our cacao liqueurs. As mentioned before, our instant version is slightly cloudy. It has plenty of cacao flavor, which was of course our goal, but it's not as full-bodied as I'd like. But still, for something as fast and easy to make, it's well above expectations. The appearance of our sous vide version is clear, and while it might not have so much cacao on the aroma, it's richer and more full-bodied on the palate, compared to the instant version. Here we achieved a nicely rounded liqueur de cacao, so I'm calling this a success. With that, I'm happy to say you can still make a great tasting liqueur de cacao at home, and cocktails that would make Oompa Loompas break out into song and dance. I'll be using the sous vide version to make today's cocktails, the Ville Vonka Negroni, in a 20th century cocktail. If you make it to the bottom of the glass of the second cocktail, you'll get to see our new wall art, picked out by our patrons. But now, let's make the Ville Vonka Negroni. Alongside our DIY liqueur de cacao, you'll of course need the classic three ingredients, gin, sweet vermouth and Campari. And we're not making it equal parts, but we're starting with one ounce or 30 ml of London dry gin, straight into a chilled global glass, or a clear ice block. I'm using beef eater gin. Follow that with one ounce or 30 ml of sweet vermouth. Novo de Dante Inferno adds quite a lot of red color as well, which comes in handy as I'm adding glass to the red beater from Milan. This time, just 3 quarters of an ounce or 22 and a half ml of Campari. That's because we're also adding half an ounce or 50 ml of white creme de cacao to turn this into a Ville Vonca Negroni. And as I often do, 2 drops of saline solution to boost the flavors. Stir to chill and dilute, then take a round coin of orange peel, express essential oils over the cocktail and place it on top. If there's a chocolate factory making this, I sure hope to find a golden ticket somewhere. Cheers! Visually, a completely classic Negroni, but on the aroma, the chocolate is already coming through. Buttery cocoa provides silkiness and adds a new layer of flavor, leaving a pleasant aftertaste. It has a great balance of bitter and sweet, made possible by a liqueur with a little less sugar. If you want to get someone hooked on Negronis, this is a great way to slowly introduce them to the classic. Now for the 20th century cocktail, which actually inspired Jörg Meyer to create a better version of creme de cacao than he could find on the market. But we'll still be using our own homemade version again, so let's make the 20th century cocktail. To make it, you'll need gin, creme de cacao or liqueur de cacao, lille blanc and lemon juice. I'm adding saline as well. According to Deforts Guide, this cocktail was created by a British bartender, C.A. Tuck, and named after the express train that traveled between New York City and Chicago from 1902 until 1967. This recipe was first published in Billy Tarling's 1937 Café Royale cocktail book. Jörg Meyer made his own version of the 20th century cocktail, using Coque Americano instead of Lille Blanc, but we're making the classic today. After you add everything in the shaker, including the ice, shake hard to chill and dilute. Then double strain into a chill cube glass. Express essential oils and garnish with a lemon coin. Cheers! On the aroma, there are actually some wine notes, with the botanicals from the gin. On the taste, however, you get a cocoa-forward cocktail, which is subtly dry and, in my opinion, perfectly balanced. If you have a sweeter tooth, you can add a bar spoon of simple syrup. The aftertaste is well-rounded and long-lasting. I'm pleased with how the DIY liqueur de cacao plays a central role. With that, we've made it to the bottom of the glass, this time hosted at their newly decorated other end of the studio. And thanks to best patrons of any speakeasy on YouTube for voting for these four options. You all help us make this show possible, so we're happy that you have a say in how our studio looks and feels. And thank you for watching until the end. Post a chocolate emoji in the comments to let me know you're here till the last drop. For more Negroni recipes, check out this video. And for more DIY ingredients, we made this playlist. See you next time, friends of cocktails.